Hey guys, it's John from The Busy Cast. I'm joined by Martin Waller and this video is part of a series of videos looking at Golden Demon models. Um, so make sure you check them all out. I've put them into a nice little playlist for you so you can check them all out together. And we also have a battle report which features Martin's Dark Eldar against my Ravenwing. So make sure you watch that as well. Uh, so right now we're going to be talking about this Orc model. So to give us a bit of background, so where was this entered, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, this, um, this big mech with Shock Attack Gun, uh, he was entered in the most recent uh, Golden Demon event, the Golden Demon Classic, as it was, was known, at uh, Warhammer Fest in uh, Coventry uh, last May. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he was um, one of five entries that I put in for, for that year, uh, and was lucky enough to come out with a, uh, a bronze statue in um, 40k large model. Uh, so yeah, over the moon with it. Um, you know, it's been a long time, uh, from 2011 when I first entered, uh, up to 2016, so obviously there's a five year gap. Uh, between sort of awards, uh, and in the you know in the middle there's been sort of you know sort of finalists and, and stuff like that, you know sort of also rounds and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, to get back on the podium again and sort of start winning awards again is yeah it's really good. Cool. There's you can tell like there's a lot of little details. I don't know if these are on the model because I'm not too familiar with the model. But have you added little things in? So for example, this Hoover type thing with the goblin being sucked up. That's really cool. yeah. That's um, that's all part of the model. Oh, wow. um, yeah, this. Um, it's pretty much I've not done too much. I haven't really um, tinkered with it. No, I've not done too much with it. The only thing I've done is added the um, targeting squig on the top. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah. From the flash kit to kit, because as soon as I saw that, I thought that's a brilliant, you know, brilliant little bit. Yeah. So I wanted to add that in there somehow, so just ended up plonking it on the top in the end. Um, you know, just nothing more than he looked cool. So, that know, was that, it, that, yeah. so that was it. Other than that, it's just a stock, you know, plastic model. Um, yeah, even down to the sort of the claw marks is all part of the plastic kit, which I think is testament to Games Workshop sort of quality of the stuff they're producing these days. Project. Yeah. Um, you know, to look at it and think, is that actually the kit or is it something that's been sculpted itself? You know, sort of you know, gives a good review to the kit. Definitely. And what so how did you approach painting this model then? Um what sort of techniques are in there as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a massive gap. I yeah. assume you've improved a lot. Yeah, I think, you know, you'll notice in the videos that I've sort of changed my style considerably. Uh, and also the standards have risen, you know, quite a lot uh, in the five years or between between two um, sort of winners. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was initially painted for an army project, just you know, sort of doing you know, for a tabletop army that I was going to plan to do. Yeah. Um, which sort of quickly changed my mind when I realised how many that I'd actually have to do. Yeah, you get a lot of walks. Yeah. yeah. So you know, quickly just sort of you know put that on the back burner. But, um, but yeah, decided to paint this model. Uh, it came out really well, and I was quite happy with it. Um, so yeah, in the end, I thought you know. In for a penny, in for a pound. So you know, checked out on, on a posh base, added some plants, and you know, the rest is history. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of sort of you know the actual sort of paint job itself, um, you know, I used an airbrush to get the the, the majority of the yellow on. Um, so you know, sort of concentrate on spraying that before moving on to the the smaller details, uh, and then just used a lot of sort of true metallic weathering, so lots of washes and glazes uh, to try and sort of differentiate and sort of you know add some texture to uh, to the metal. How would you go about that with those washes and glazes? Say you wanted to weather a piece of the model, what would be your um, exact process? Initially, I'd, sort of, I'd, I'd go out into the real world and look for you know sort of realistic things to sort of you know emulate yeah. or simulate. Um, you know, sort of think well, if it's you know sort of copper or, or brass, you know you're looking at that sort of verdigris, that green blue colour. Yeah. Uh, whereas you know steel and iron is very sort of rusty and orange, so. You know, chop. That's the main thing, and not mixing up the two. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of people sort of put blue and orange on, and you have, you have, you have, reality is that's not how it works. Yeah. Um, and as soon as I've done that, I'll start. You know, sort of looking at where is it likely, where's water likely to collect. You know, sort of around rivets and wow, that sort okay. of stuff. And then start working out where it's going to be dripping, and you know, sort of you're trying to sort of emulate gravity. Yeah. Uh, so you know, you sort of thinking well, in reality, where is it going to be dripping, and you know, sort of trying to follow that. Yeah. It's an amazing amount of thought that would go into something like that. Like when you look at it, you like you take it all in as a whole, but you don't realise yeah. you have to think about that sort of stuff in such detail. Yeah, there's a lot of forward planning that sort of goes into it. Mm. Um, sometimes, you know, some things work, some things don't. Um, what I learned from doing the Arachnarok five years ago, yeah. uh, you know, sort of sub-assemblies, you know, you paint something, yeah. when you stick it on, you realise it's actually pointing in the wrong direction. Yeah. You know, or you're weathering and stuff. So 
Um, but yeah, it's um, it's been a labour of love. But yeah, this was originally just painted for a gaming army, and yeah, it's exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Somewhat. Well, so for this model in particular, what was your biggest takeaway from that, and in terms of learning a uh, learning experience? Um, with this one, it was more about sort of blending and highlighting, so on you know the flesh on his arm and you know on his face. Yeah. Just trying to sort of incorporate glazes to try and sort of alter the tones. Yeah. Um, so you know with the uh, with the flesh on the um, on the orc's face, you know I sort of incorporate purples and browns into the green shading. Oh wow. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's probably the main the main sort of take from it, and also the weathering of the the metals and stuff because. There's quite a considerable amount of that going on. Very nice. Huh? I've got a question. Go for it. Yeah. Um, obviously, that one's mostly yellow. That's a good old Um A lot mm. of people, I would imagine, will probably be very interested in how you do yellow because for, for many people, it could seem like a bit of a daunting task. Um, did you find it difficult? And any advice you could give on people painting yellow? Yeah, yellow is a bit of a a bit of a nightmare. Um, I sort of follow quite a, a prescribed method for painting yellow on sort of industrial stuff, so walks. Um, so I'll start off with uh, a base coat of Rhinoxide initially, uh, and then work up through Rhinoxide through Scrag Brown, um, which is quite a strange sort of, you know, I think why well, you're starting so dark, but it, it sort of helps you blending along. Uh, and then through Scrag Brown into the Ereal, Ereal Yellow, um, and then sort of add uh, Lamenta's yellow glaze into the mix as well, um, just to try and smooth everything out. Once that's done, I'll start going in with uh, Seraphim Sepia um, uh, wash and just start adding that into all the sort of deeper recesses uh, and also panel lines, things like that. Uh, and then once that's done, I'll go back in with the Ereal Yellow as, a, as an edge highlight uh, and then a 50 50 mix of uh, Ereal Yellow and Screaming Skull. Once all that's done, I'll then do a very light glaze of uh, Lamenta's Yellow just to tie it all up uh, and finish it all off. But yeah, that's the recipe I tend to use uh, with um, with most of my yellows at the minute. Wow, useful tips. Cool, um, thank you for watching guys. This video is obviously part of a series, so you can watch all the other videos I put in a playlist, just binge on them. Uh, also have a battle report, so make sure you watch that. Cheers guys, if you can like, comment, subscribe, it makes a big difference, thanks. Cheers. Hey guys, it's John from the VisiCast. I am joined by Martin Waller, and with this is part of the series. I'm going to do that again. Fuck my hangover. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs>